Hi, and welcome to the second video for section 4.3. This is the second of three videos. So we've dealt a lot with f prime, the first derivative of a function. We know from almost day one of this class that when we're talking about the first derivative, we're talking about the slope of the tangent line to the function. But what about the second derivative? If we then take the derivative of the again, we end up with maybe a constant value, maybe zero, uh, maybe another uh, function. But what does that tell us? What does f prime say to us about the function? So first we have this definition. If the graph of f lies above its tangent lines, on interval i, it is called concave whoops, up or concave upward I think the book uses and so depending on who you're talking to they'll either say it's concave up or concave down and concave down is that if f if the graph of f lies below all the tangent lines It is called concave down or concave downward. So way back when, when I learned about concavity, is what this is called, it was told to me like think of a coffee cup. So, or let's say a coffee cup without a handle, right? The handle would have been over here. And actually, we're going to round it off a little bit. So if I had this coffee cup, if the coffee cup is facing upward, all the tangent lines of the outside of this thing, the graph or the cup is always above the lines, right? If I took this co coffee cup and turned it upside down, all the tangent lines at this point, so tangent line here, tangent line there, 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 everywhere, the graph or the coffee cup is always underneath the tangent line, so it's concave down. So the coffee cup is facing upward. All the lines around the outside are under, or the cup is inside the line, so it's concave up. When the coffee cup is facing downward, concave down, then all the lines on the outside, the cup is underneath of it. So that always helped me to remember it. I don't know if it's helped you or not. Hopefully it does. But that's what... Uh, we're talking about concave up or concave down. If I have some graph, so so all the tangent lines to this guy, the graph is always above the lines, and so therefore it's concave up. And similarly for concave down. Well, again, hopefully that helps you remember. So another definition a point P on what the function y is equal to f of x is called an inflection point If f is continuous
and changes from concave up to concave down or vice versa. So concave down to concave up. So if you're remembering, if you remember in the last video, when I was talking about the graph of uh, x to the third power and struggling there, well, it's zero, what's happening? I'm like, it's called an inflection point. That's what it is. So if we look at the graph of x to the third, whoops, that's almost a circle. So x to the third, so what happens? On the right side, it's concave up because all the tangent lines, the graph is above it. But as soon as I hit zero, what happens? Well, now the graph is below all the tangent lines. Therefore, that point, P, which is zero in this case, is my point of inflection or the inflection point where it changes from concave up to concave down. So it either looks like a, like a cup or a bowl, and all of a sudden the cup or bowl is changed to upside down or vice versa. So this all leads us finally to what does this have to do with the second derivative? And it's the concavity test. And we have the two possibilities. If f double prime of x, so the second derivative of x, if that is greater than 0 for all x, on the interval i, then f is concave up on that interval i. And similarly, if f double prime, if the second derivative of f, if the second derivative of f is less than 0 for all x on i, then f is concave down. On that interval i. So, if I take the first derivative and it's positive, I know I'm running uphill. And if I take the second derivative and find out it's also positive, it's concave up. So that means what? It's running uphill, but it's concave up, which is like a coffee cup upwards. So that would be what? Something that looks like this. I don't even know what the function is, but if I know the first derivative is positive and the second derivative is positive, it has to be, look like this on the graph. If the first derivative is positive, but the second derivative is negative, well, that means what? It means it's still running uphill. It's increasing, but it's concave down. So it means it would look something like that, right? So I don't even know what the function is, but if I know is the first derivative positive or negative, is the second derivative positive or negative, I can tell you what the graph looks like at that point. So come on back. Uh, video three, we're going to look at an example kind of just like this. I'm going to give you some information and based on that information, sketch what the graph could look like based on the information you were given. So that wraps up video two. We'll see you in video three.